Hey guys, let me ask you today, do you know what a concept art portfolio is? Do you know what it should be? Is it a place that we can showcase our work, archive everything we know and have done? Is it a place to upload our daily sketches? Well, I'm going to answer no to a lot of those. And I think that's a huge issue with a lot of the submissions that I get for uh, portfolio reviews. And we're going to look at one today. But there's a lack of understanding on what a portfolio is or should be. And if structured right, I mean, it should establish connections, we should build our reputation, and of course, bring on a much better stream of clients. And essentially, with a good, you know, concept art portfolio, we really need to show that we can not only understand, but we can solve our potential clients needs. After all, they come to us, the designer and the artist with specific sets of problems, and they're looking for someone to solve that. And if your work is not showcasing that, then there's a huge disconnect. And that's probably why you're not getting callbacks. So let's get into five really key important things I feel that your portfolio needs to have to make yourself not only stand out, but to be more successful. Let's go. All right, so today, uh, Atanas writes us and he says he's a 2D concept artist and he's very new to the industry and he needs some help. He, he needs some kind of feedback on his portfolio. I do get these all the time and as you can see, I with, with his permission of course, we're going to break it down and hopefully give everybody uh, a little bit more of an insight as to how we can show clients we can not only understand but solve their problems and what we can do you know, in regards to that. So let's take a look at his work today. So right off the bat, looking at his work here, I can see and take away one big thing that is going to be my first key point with today's lesson, and that is consistency. And what you'd want to ask yourself if you're making a portfolio, if you're in a similar position, you want to ask yourself, what kind of clients am I looking for? What kind of jobs do I want to receive? Because when I see something a little more like this, with you know, given that he wants to look for concept art jobs, I'm not seeing a ton of concept art on page. And if I did see a lot of concept art on page here, you know, what kind would it be? Would it be for for characters? You know, like like, like a piece like this. Would it be for illustration? Even you know, something like this. We have, we have a mix of of fan art in here. There's um, graphic you know, illustrations in here as well. So like if we're m trying to market ourselves as a concept designer, but we're not showing much in regards to concept art, do you see that there's a massive disconnect there? But coming back to my point, it's consistency because we see, you know, line arts and we see, um, you know, kind of nicely painted environments. We see sketchy characters. We see almost like comic like style character. Uh, illustrations here. Uh, my first takeaway is that this work could have been done by four to five different people. It lacks that consistency. So really with this uh, consistency, we want to hit a few big points. Uh, and the first one, of course, is technique or style, technically. Not everything has to be the same style. Not every image has to be built the same way. But there needs to be like a little bit of consistency throughout and that needs to work in your favor, meaning the biggest consistent thing I can see with this body of work here is that there's a lot of unfinished or kind of sketch like ideas. And you can kind of see that in a piece like this, right? Like it's it's like, OK, it's a sketch, but how is this going to how are you showing with this piece here that you can solve someone else's problem? Right. That's that's what I'm talking about here today. You have like a bunch of cool. There's a lot of creativity here on display. This is not about that. Um, and you know, and you can, you clearly got the ideas in your head, but it's like, what is this piece showing? What is, how is that really marketing, you know, yourself? That's where the issue is. And again, like that piece is very different from this. And like, then this PC, it feels like a, it's a sketchbook dump, you know, that should, this should be like on Instagram or Facebook or heck even Twitter, right? Like there, there's the only thing consistent is the inconsistency in this work. And that's the issue. Of course, if you have other areas of consistency, like theme and genre, if like you do all environments or all characters or all dark fantasy or all hard surface sci-fi, right? Like 
that would essentially establish your niche. If you so we're taking concept art, building it with a purpose, double downing on a niche. I'm not saying you have to start off the gate as a specialist, and I do have videos on that. But like you want to kind of advertise yourself ideally like this is what I'm really good at and this is what I can do for you. So that's going to lead us to our point number two today that I feel it's really easy if you just take every one of your pieces that you're going to consider to put on your portfolio and categorize it in one of the into one of these three categories. Now the first one I'm going to call technique or raw rendering right like just making a beautifully artistically sound image. And again, I feel you you have some stuff that are pretty close to that. See, like this is pretty good. I think it's very interesting, very artistic, very graphic. Um, so that could potentially fit that bill. If we're going to use one of my own examples here for a moment, it could be something like this, this castle piece here, right? Like I spent a lot of time making that look good. It's, it's got some cinematic value to it. It's got really nice lighting and compositional skills, like all these technique things. Now, the next big uh, category that I feel like, again, is the most important, particularly for concept art, would be your problem solving stuff, right? This is kind of how we started off that video. What can you show in your, your portfolio that shows consistency to problem solve? And that would be like a piece like this, this missile launcher here done uh, by my uh, artist, Tyler Bourne, right? So this is just that cutout stuff, that call out stuff. It's, it's lots of props. It's lots of ideas. It's showing like, okay, if someone comes to us and they need weapon designs, if they need vehicle designs, again, something kind of like this, that's what this would be. It's showing that you can comprehensively get into an idea and really just break it down. Uh, I actually had a, a job offer this week just with this one vehicle design. It's my only vehicle design in my whole portfolio, but they liked it so much. They're like, I think you'd be a great fit for this project. So it's as simple as that in, in some instances. And the third one is a novel or clever idea, right? Like something doesn't necessarily need to be the prettiest picture or the, the most artistic thing in the world. And it doesn't necessarily even need to show you could solve everybody's problems. But if it's like a really kind of unique or clever idea in itself, that adds value, right? And we're all, and we're talking about how does each individual little piece of your, your portfolio add potential value to that portfolio? So again, like as a, kind of an example, like my little novel idea, and this isn't super novel, but it's more unique compared to a lot of things I have is like a coral monster and like this underground or this underwater race and this whole summoner thing. I thought I had a kind of novel idea. It's certainly not showing I can solve a ton of problems aside illustrating, you know, fairly competently. Uh, so ideally, if, if your work is not gonna fit into one of those three categories, if it fits into multiple categories, then bingo, right? There's a there's a good thing to aim for. So again, coming back to um, the city example here, which was received pretty well for for my audience, and it you know I, some really nice clients reached out after I had posted this. But okay, so it it's checking box number one, right? Nicely rendered. Box number two. It because I showed all the work in in this particular process here it shows I can solve problems and I I can really lead into like iterations ideations I can come up with multiple solutions for a problem and of course it, it's a slightly novel idea like there's a lot of castles out there there's not too many coral themed castles so it's see it kind of checks that third box therefore for me it hits all three criteria and in a perfect world I'd have nothing but work that solved all three criteria, but it's very time consuming, right? Very laborious. So coming back to your work here, if you can try to ask yourself, like, again, like this is like the, the closest thing that kind of feels like a piece of concept design. But again, the, the issue is nothing's been fully solved. They're very kind of first pass sketches. Again, that's something more of like for a sketchbook, or this would be something that more can supplement a higher or more finished idea, but on its own doesn't necessarily stand. All right, so next up we're on for point number three. And for me, that would be shows your thought process, which I feel is more important nowadays than ever with the amount of AI art leaking out there, with the amount of pre-bought assets you can just quickly stitch a scene together and toss it on a portfolio. I think it's very important to show potential clients 
that thought process. So for example, right, if we look at this idea here, you got like a cool Star Wars base. I'm all about Star Wars bases. And we can see you've got a bit of a final result here. Now, this is what I'm talking about um, as to like, we don't necessarily need to see this part of the process and that like we can almost see your step by step like on how you built this image. That's not terrible, but it's not as good as like, okay, like if this is your base idea, where's your sheet of like eight different versions of that base? So we could see like, okay, you went through this process. Here's your roadmap. You, you chose this one for this reason and, and then this one's stronger over this one. That's what I'm talking about in, in, in regards to showing your thought process, right? Like it's like back when I was in school and I had a TI-89 calculator in calculus class and I didn't know calculus, but heck, I could just punch that algorithm into my calculator. It solved all the problems for me. I could get every answer on a test correct, but you know what? I'd still get 60s because I didn't show the work. So showing the work adds tremendous value in a concept art portfolio specifically. Again, I try to show this on as many projects as I can. Here's a, again, a brief example from the old Arc, Arc Meadow area. See, like I would show like, okay, even though I arrived with this hut next to this temple, right? I, I did like eight different temple sketches. I messed with five different compositions. I came up with, right, like 12 different hut designs. And I, I chose, you know, through the process of elimination and iteration, of course, that this was the best solution for this problem. That's the stuff you want to showcase in a concept art portfolio. So that brings us to point number four. Does your portfolio show any kind of adaptability and flexibility? And I, I do think yours has that, you know, to a degree. Again, and part of that is the variety of things that you do have, you know, from... <clears throat> you know, some robots. Again, nothing really comes to a finish here, and that's more or less my, my bigger issue with that. And um, your your ability to do design languages as well, that, that's a huge thing. Because like when you get on projects, especially if you're freelancing, you're constantly making subtle style shifts and have to understand what the restraints and what the parameters are for projects. Um, so for example, let's, let's look at a body of work that really, um, uh, showcases this. So back like a year and a half ago when we were developing this area for, um, Fortnite, and this is Jir Savio Kanata's work here. One of my, my colleagues, you could see here, like nothing's like super finished to like a high, high degree, but it's good. It's clear stuff. And of course that it, um, shows a variety of these solutions and breakdowns for potential options. But like, there's a consistency to like, okay, like if this is all for this settlement, I think it was the seven sanctuary here, so you can kind of see that um, it, there's consistency. Everything's ellipsed, it, there's a lot of circles, right? There's a design language. So showing your ability to not only create, but adapt to dis specific design languages is a real key benefit in a lot of concept art portfolios these days. You can kind of see the unified color schemes. And like when I was brought on to this particular season, right, I had to adapt. We had to do that. My, my team, Tyler, and I had to ad adapt to these design languages as we were fleshing out what this island settlement means. And that, and that means like earlier on, you know, with, with this, it looked a lot rougher, right? And of course, there was different, the buildings looked differently entirely. I kind of missed the mark initially with the design language, but you know, through um, iterations and feedback, you know, was able to get that a lot closer to what they were looking for, as well as design. You know, it, it you know, again, adapting on a project means okay, like we have antennas on these buildings, so like let's give them you know ten or fifteen ideas. This is just a small sampling of them of what various types of antennas could look like if they were built by these people, right? Likewise, if they had artillery guns what would they look like? And just to show you an example of an opposing design language, that would have been like the IO faction, right? Like very different shapes, very different forms. It's a different design language. So if your concept art portfolio shows your ability to adapt to these different types of design languages out there, and there's an infinite number, it's just a, again, it's a consistency thing to show, right? Oh yeah, we're looking like at, at pillars and rift generators, but they all look like they belong you know, to the same group of people or faction. That kind of stuff in a portfolio is very, very important. Um, and yeah, that's gonna lead us now, of course, to number five. And this is a bit of an oversimplification of things, but almost if you kind of like 
gamify or RPG yourself and your skills, um, where would you fit on a team, you know, in, in, a, in a greater sense? Are you going to be the go-to 3D guy or, or 2D guy, right? A specialist. That means like, okay, you can just model things and ideas so quickly. You can provide a really awesome service to other people. So I have a go-to 3D guy. He can whip up scenes and props very, very fast. And, you know, were you a 2D, the 2D counterpart to that? Can you, can you paint and articulate ideas so well? Like, oh, I got to be the person on the team that's going to paint a beautiful face. I can paint any material meticulously, give it that nice handcrafted touch. So, right, are you going to be the go-to 2D or 3D guy? The next thing is, or, you know, are you a master of color and light, right? That the person on the team doing gorgeous, beautiful splash art. And see, that's like my issue with like a lot of these. Again, it's not necessarily design. It's not even, you know, the presentation, but it does have a fairly inconsistent, if not unfinished look up there for what like a 2D artist should really be able to specialize in. You know, like, again, the composition's fine, but the lighting gets a little flat. And some of the clouds get a little too repetitive in this. So like, if you're aiming for like a, you know, core, you know, P key, uh, a core piece of splash art, how can you really get you know, like that nice even level of, of finish on something that really sells it with light and again, composition. Again, I think lighting and composition is a strong component for almost any portfolio. But if you're like really showcasing to a, you know, particular uh, client or even a team that you can have a strong narrative and sell that with composition and lighting, I think that's really good. And of course, the other person or the other kind of person I want to talk to about where your art and where you could fit in as a role could be, are you the idea factory? That means you don't necessarily need to be super good at 3D. You don't need to necessarily be able to outpaint the other guy, but you can crank out ideas. You're a thinker. You're always thinking outside the box, right? You're the person that's sketching out hundreds of ideas, dozens of ideas. Oh, they need a gun design and they need a blaster. Here's a page of 20 blasters by noon. You know, okay, you want A, B, and C? Let me get those refined and cleaned up by the end of the day. All right, guys, so as we wrap this up, let's go for a brief recap. First thing I recommend is consistency. First and foremost, the consistency of quality. The quality of all the work should be really good. The technique, the theme, and genre, that, that can all help, but not, of course, is, is necessary. The second thing is, does your work fit into one or three camps? You know, is does it really rendered well? Is it uh, artistically very sound? Is, is the idea? right kind of novel or fundamental or does it show you know number three is problem solving with that so uh, the other big point is thought process does do you show your creative process and can you break things down that goes without say especially in nowadays uh, the 2023 portfolio uh, environment um, and of course number four would be flexibility and adaptability does your work just Display that you can adapt to design languages? Does it show that you can use historical contexts even to, uh, you know, imbue in your design to enrich it and to basically push its quality using our own history and our own human context? That means if you're doing a sci-fi design, it doesn't look like, a, you know, is entirely just made up out of thin air. There's relatability to it. And of course, the last element I went over was what kind of role could you fit into on a on a production team are you the go-to you know 3d or 2d guy are you the idea person are you just do you have a really good eye for art can you do composition and color and light better than everybody else on the squad so guys i hope that these tips helped you out today and of course thank you again atanas for submitting your work i hope this helped as many people as we could possibly reach and i just wanted to make a, a brief announcement that i've hired uh you know my extremely talented and former student uh, Zhao Fan to she's going to be mentoring in the character design and illustration um, categories and areas uh, with the brush saw studio now and uh, we're starting anyone that signs up that has an interest in that immediately as, as you guys know with 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 me right now there's a current uh, like six month wait time I think we're we're booking out into July or August at this point but if, if you want to start in those two specialties uh, we could sign you up today um, with Jao Fan. so again you can check any info you want below and I'll catch you guys next time